Hello everyone! So as you can see the quality isn't the best and that's because my camera broke. Basically what I did was I put my SD card inside my camera and it said that there's no SD card. So I tried a different SD card and it still didn't work so basically I had to go repair it and they said it would take like a month. So I'm filming with my smaller compact camera like with the vlogging camera but the next video i'm uploading is actually a video that i managed to film before the camera broke and that is a diy harry potter school supplies yeah! in this video i'm gonna talk about how i got a seven in ib biology and chemistry i took both as higher levels so yeah i made a video about my general ib tips and advice a few weeks ago so if you haven't seen that one go watch it before this one because everything that I said in that video also applies to <laughs> IB biology and chemistry but basically in this video I'm gonna talk specifically about biology and chemistry about my resources my IAs and basically everything that I did to get sevens in those subjects <laughs> Let's start with chemistry. So before taking a test in chemistry, like a small test on one topic, I would always do four different things. Firstly, I would review my notes. That's kind of self-explanatory, but yeah, I would review my notes. Then the second thing I would do is I would read the study guide. The study guide is your best friend. It's the best thing ever. I had two big textbooks for chemistry, but I never ever opened them because I always, always looked inside the study guide. Also at the end of each topic there's multiple uh, choice questions and also paper two questions so I would do those and then I would use this website I'm gonna leave the link in the description box but basically on this website you have the past papers um, in categories like for each topic so it's very easy and accessible and the final thing which I did before taking a test was to Look at the syllabus. If you read the syllabus and you know everything that's in the syllabus, then you're probably not going to be surprised by a question in the test. So always read the syllabus. So now let's move on to the pre-final exam period. So my main study technique was to make very condensed notes. I made three sets of notes for chemistry. So first of all, I made notes on everything that I needed to know for like paper one and paper two. Every time I was... I was making notes I made sure that I reorganized the knowledge I also made sure that I included like the keywords they usually wanted to hear or mistakes that I made in the previous smaller tests now the second set of notes that I made for chemistry is for the options so I did biochemistry and as you can see I only have one two three four four and a half um, sides of paper of notes for the whole topic oh that's the notes the third set of notes that i made was uh, for the practicals now in paper three they usually ask you about specific practicals that you should have done throughout the two years and it's always like evaluation questions or method questions so basically i made notes on all the compulsory practicals and for each practical i made sure to note down what the method was, what the assumptions were. I actually made notes on this from past paper questions so I went through a lot of paper 3 questions and I um, made notes on all the practical questions they asked the students so these are all notes from the mark schemes. I started making my notes in about February but besides the notes I also did a lot, a lot, a lot of past papers. So I used the IB Resources uh, website that I will leave in the description box. For chemistry, I did all the past papers from 2012, I think. Yeah. I'm actually gonna scan all my notes and leave a link to them in the description box down below if you would like to see how I made them. But please do not just study from them. There's a lot of mistakes in them and they're quite messy, so. Please don't just study from them, like, 
I don't want to be responsible for not giving you all the knowledge that you should have. It's the best for you if you make your own notes and just organize them how you want them to be. So now let's move on to my internal assessment. So again, I'm gonna leave a link to this in the description box so you can get inspired, you can see the structure, but please do not copy it. You would fail, so just, it's just for inspiration. I don't know what I'm doing with my fingers. <laughs> so my research question was, how does temperature affect the rate constant of aspirin hydrolysis into salicylic acid and acetic acid? So basically what I did was, I made solutions containing aspirin and I let them hydrolyze at different temperatures and every 10 minutes I reacted them with iron chloride which produces a violet complex and the opacity of the resulting solution determines the concentration of salicylic acid which is the product of the aspirin hydrolysis. I actually had to make a calibration curve beforehand so basically I had known concentrations of salicylic acid and I measured the light absorbance, then when I measured the opacity in the actual experiment, I knew the concentration of salicylic acid. Yeah, that's basically my internal assessment. So now let's move on to my poetry. Again, I had a list of things that I needed to complete before writing a test or an exam. I think it's mainly psychological, but by completing all these things, I knew that I did my best and I did my best. So the first thing is the same as with chemistry, I just reviewed my notes. The second thing is that I read the study guide and also completed the questions in the study guide. As well as some past paper questions, I forgot to say this in the video. <laughs> the fourth thing is that I read the syllabus, again just like with chemistry. But the final thing that I did in biology and not in chemistry is that I read all the essay questions on the topic. Essay questions are huge in paper too. So I used this website for the essay questions. So by doing this, I made sure that I was aware of the answers and the keywords they usually want you to write in an essay question. So just like for chemistry, I made very, very condensed notes for biology when I was preparing for the final, final exam. I made notes on paper one and paper two, like the general a biology knowledge so these are all my notes for biology I actually made the notes on my computer because I was actually copy pasting a lot of uh, diagrams and pictures from the study guide and just like with chemistry I made these notes from the study guide from the syllabus also from the mark schemes and from the mistakes that I made in previous tests then I made notes for my options so I did neurobiology and this I actually have one, two, three, four, five, six sides. Very condensed notes. Just like with chemistry, I also made notes on the practicals, like all the evaluations, all the methods, all the assumptions and stuff like that. So most of the practical questions have actually repeated themselves um, in the past papers. If you just go through all of the past papers and all of the paper threes and read the mark schemes, then you're good to go. So as I said, I would always go through the possible essay questions before writing a test on the topic. So for the final exams, what I did was I actually printed out all, like all of the essay questions that have been asked in the past. There's a limited number of questions that they can ask you. So before writing an exam or a test, just go through all the possible essay questions on the topic read the mark schemes properly, read all the keywords and what they give marks for and that way you will be much more ready and you will actually know what to write when you're answering the essay question. And just like with chemistry, I started studying for biology like for the final exam in like February and I also did all the past papers from 2014 and I made sure that I had them timed so I knew how fast I was and it was a good time management. <laughs> so now let's talk about my biology internal assessment. So my research question was, how does the concentration of gerberlic acid added to a pea plant seed affect its germination and growth? So I actually got 23 out of 24 points for this, I, which I'm very happy about. So if you don't know what gerberlin is, it's a hormone that promotes growth and germination. So simply I made different concentrations of gibberlin solutions and I watered pea seeds with the different concentrations and once they grew I 
watered the plant with the different concentrations and again I'm gonna leave a link to this in the description box of course you can get inspired and see my structure of the IA but please do not copy it because you would fail <laughs> so yeah that's everything that I wanted to talk about in this video again I'm gonna leave all the links all my notes all the resources in the description box down below so I hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll see you in my Harry Potter video bye <laughs>